What some don't realize, and I'm not sure how it hasn't come up more often, maybe I just keep that side a little bit tucked away, but my last few years at the bedside as an RN was in the specialty of psychiatric care, um, and I am a psych certified RN. So I know I've talked a lot about being a GYN and GYN oncology RN um, post-surgical, uh, but my last few years was as a psych nurse. So when I look at resources that pop up, things like this, I look at it through a different lens. So allow me the opportunity to introduce you to a brand new resource, or maybe you've seen it float around already, um, from the creator of Grammar Galaxy and Fast Grammar. This is Training Aliens, Adventures in Social Emotional Skills. This is targeted for grades K through eight, and I'll tell you all about it as we walk through it. So stick around. <music> Maybe there's a version of me left that doesn't feel afraid of what comes next. Welcome back, friends. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company. As I said before, we're going to be walking through training, aliens, adventures, and social emotional skills by Dr. Melanie Wilson. This is level one. There is also going to be a level two that is going to be released, and I will let you know what that is available as well and what the difference are um, at that point, too. Um, this is tailored for grades eight to eight, and your older kiddos are going to be more in like a leadership type of role um, to kind of just make it mesh well together if you have really young kiddos and um, older kiddos. Um, and then again, um, I did receive this in exchange for my honest review, but I actually requested this. <laughs> the minute I saw, I, you know, what she had created, I was like, wait, 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 wait I want to see this. Um, one based on my background, one based on the fact that this is a neurodiverse home. Both kiddos are autistic. I'm ADHD. There's a various degree in neurodiversity in our own home, and we've had, uh, um, done so many social um, emotions. They were very, very little, and it was things that I crafted myself based on my own knowledge, and then pulled from different resources like left and right, and so many different things. So the fact that this is available now um, just brings joy to my heart to see that other families will be able to benefit um, from something that is just nice and laid out for them um, versus having to do what I did and pulling from all direction in my own um, personal I was knowledge. very excited um, to see that her create this and tapping into her roots as um, Dr. Melanie Wilson is a clinical psychologist and she adapted a lot of the techniques that you will find here in activities into her own practice. So it's things that she's put into practice and seen um, how it has evolved and how it has helped each individual child. So that was exciting to me and my nerdiness just needed to know more and learn more. So I was excited um, to review this and um, spend some time with it, which is why I had not released it yet. I wanted it to um, really take um, my time. You are going to receive there's two different versions. Let's start there. This is the secular version. All right. So um, just like Grammar Galaxy, Grammar Galaxy is secular. She has other um, things in her store um, that are um, faith based. She's Christian. Um, so you will see that clearly notated. But those are like more like planning organization type of things, I think. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't really venture on that side. Um, but um, Grammar Galaxy your fast grammar and this is secular however there is another version and it's clearly marked when you're in the store of training aliens um that is faith-based and i'll say it on here faith-based so where it differs is that there is a connection to stories that is recommended um and this version the secular version is going to use fables and um the faith-based version will use some bible verses now let's see because i want to mention this i know this is a secular channel but i want to mention this because i think it's really cool and it's so like you know i know it will help a lot of families um because i have people here from all different walks of life um if you um need to purchase a secular version because you're using charter funds or whatever not i don't know about that life we don't have you know um that type of setup here in florida um but if you're using charter funds i know that you have to like in most places you have to purchase the secular um resources and but you are a faith-based home she has um offered on her website a free download of the bible verses that she uses in the faith-based one that's the main difference that's it so um if you need to buy the secular version but you still want to take advantage of knowing the the bible verses that are connected and stuff like that there's a free download on her website that will have that for you and then you can just go ahead and add that in and use your charter funds to purchase this if this is the right for you now another thing um i do have a discount code i believe it's going to expire in a week i'll flash the date 
right on here so you can see when it expires and that's going to give you 20 percent off and that is code is arlene 20 so if you want to go ahead and take advantage of that if this is what's right for you and your family you can go ahead and do that arlene 20 what do you code? get in your bundle I believe she also offers it in pdf don't quote me on that i haven't um, looked at the site in, uh, in a hot minute but um this is the physical copy in the bundle you do definitely need um this is the text this is your story-based element of the uh, of the curricula you need both okay and then this is a training manual um teacher's guide so if you know anything about grammar galaxy um you have like a mission manual um and then the story-based element so you're going to be able to kind of recognize the format because a lot of it kind of just flows into this but this has a lot of its own uniqueness um this is not a workbook type of thing um this is not meant to hand over to your child um to do it independently in fact she actually recommends you do this in a group setting um so if you have multiple kiddos great if you only have one child and you wanted to get the best of it um you can either invite family members um to do things in a group setting or do it in a co-op or just set up like some I'm kind of thing you will get a lot more out of it if you can um, bring in some more personalities into the mix um with my kiddos when we did some um social emotional learning type of things and uh um in our younger years um, my two kiddos and me um, and it still worked but I acknowledge that it would have been an even much much more of a you know great experience if we had more faces right all right so here is we're gonna go over um, in order let's do this let's go in order because I want to show you at the same time how you would use this so initially you would use the story you would read the story first, right? So you can read this as a read aloud um, to your um, kiddos the setting. There is gonna be four units. There is going to be um, six, 16. 16 missions. So um, this curricula, like let's say if you set this up to do one a week, and um, so with the 16 missions, you you could be done in a semester. Now, if you want to stretch this out, um, expand and go beyond that and extend it on for the year. All right. So um, if you're expecting a quick uh, review, that's not my style. I'm going to give you all the details and how so to you're going to have your first unit, which is friendship and communication. Second unit is emotion management. Third unit is group membership and fourth unit is problem solving. Um, just like Grammar Galaxy and everything else that she has created, there is this story fictional, um, story-based element, um, like Grammar Galaxy, you know, um, you have the gremlins trying to wreak havoc on the universe and you have to do these certain missions to save, you know, vocabulary world or whatever it may be. Um, that's not an accurate statement, vocabulary world, but you, I'm trying to remember all the like specific missions, but you get the drift. With this one, you have um, coming into space camp and that whole setting of how is they're going to help um, the aliens kind of just feel comfortable, um, help them with like when they were in these sticky situations. And a lot of it is also gonna be like choose your own adventure type of deal. And I'll show you how the fictional works. stories about alien struggles. Um, and then you can see the, the different challenges and the responses. And not only like, oh, this is the correct response, but you're gonna see like which choice would you make um but can we make a better choice and i'll explain that in a second um so it's uh, like i said it's not intended to be done independently we're yes, facilitating these different reactions and um and questions all right so you begin by reading these and then um you read the story so here you're going to have like introduction so you know what the setting is going to be and then you go um you'll have some um, questions to discuss prior to hitting the mission and the video. So let's go into the first unit because that was just the introduction. So fresh friendship and communication. So the first one, and I'm going to show you how it um, flows into this um, based on this one lesson, right? And you can look at um, samples online too. So meeting new people, you read the story. It may take you a couple minutes, five minutes tops. Um, to read the story. And um, this also, if you have older kiddos, you can take an opportunity of them to read the story out loud to their younger siblings or whatever it may be. And then once you read the story, so this is a scenario where they're coming in, they just 
came from wherever they came from, the aliens, and um, they're trying to bring them onto stage. And but they're very, very shy. And um, when they call their name, they don't come out. Um, so they don't come out. And um, they ask, like, basically, okay, how can we help? You know, encourage them to come out so we can all meet them. So these are the options that are given. So. These are two common options, not like one is correct and one is wrong, but these are two common options that kiddos may say or they may do. And then it's gonna step into, once you select one, kinda like in a funny, disastrous way, how that can fall through. Um, and then you're gonna be given, okay, a mission of how to, not just getting the answer, but a mission to find a better way to help in this scenario or similar scenarios. And we'll tap into that. So two options appear on the screen. Uh, let them stay backstage until they're ready to meet us or drag them onto the stage. So, you know, again, different personalities in your group say maybe saying something different. So maybe you have um, some kiddos, if you have a big group that will choose group A chooses this option and um, group B is choosing um, option B and um, then seeing like, okay, what's going to happen with those scenarios. So here you'll see the, um, if you chose um, to let them stay backstage until they're ready to meet us, then it's going to continue on the story, just like those type of books that choose your own adventure. And it's going to continue on the story and tell you what, how that story ended or basically where it led to by choosing that option, which again is a common one, but not the best option, right? So, and then here you can also go ahead and read this one. So let's say the other group that you have in your um, group setting has chose to drag them on to the stage. And then it continues the story, not just like, you know, a teacher just saying, well, this is not the right thing to do because it just continues the story in a humorous way um, that is approachable to kiddos of multiple ages. And then you go into your mission, right? So before you hit this next one, the lesson, you go into your mission. Now you're going to have a couple options once you hit your mission. There is a video element um, that Dr. Wilson created. I thought they were so cool and adorable. I love the videos. Like I want you to continue to do these videos. They're very short. It's not something that's going to take 20 minutes to do or anything like that. It's very short and sweet and it presents um, the lesson to you, which uh, for this particular one is meeting new people. And then you go into the mission. Um, or if you prefer not to do the videos, then you can just leave the lesson yourself um, with that part of that element. I think the videos are, are just so cute. Like I loved it. I loved it. I was just yeah. Okay. So let's look at a Hello campers. I am Dr. Wilson and I have been asked to give you some tips on training the alien guests who have joined you at space camp. To do that, I'm going to have my dog, Josie, help me. Josie, say hello. If Josie could talk, she might say she's too shy to say hello. But shyness just means being afraid of new people and situations. She isn't used to being in my office with the lights on her. No one likes being afraid, including Josie. So we try to avoid situations that make us afraid. Josie would like to leave right now, but avoiding fear isn't going to make it better. It will make it worse. Instead, to improve shyness when meeting new people, our alien friends have to practice. I used to be scared to talk on video, but I did it once. And you know what? I was still scared. I was scared the second time, the third time, and the fourth time. In fact, it took 75 times of talking on video. Note to, to the teacher scared. here, um, you're gonna have um, it broken down. You're gonna read your text aloud first. Um, this is the opportunity where you would hand it to um, an older child if you want and have them read it aloud and have them leading the, the activity and discussion um, if you prefer. And this is just a way to um, have like a seventh and eighth grader tag along too. Um, great for you morning basket people or morning time people too. You will uh, read the story, uh, then you can do the video lesson that you just watched a clip of um, and, or you can lead it yourself. Then you're going to do the training activities to help teach those skills and you can add delete make it your own these are some of the skills if some things just are you know that will trigger you your feel child. free to delete edit modify whatever may um 
whatever may connect. Then you're gonna have the fables that you may um, read from online source or print them or anything like that. So the fables are easily um, found in the back matter right here, the stories. And it's not something that, unless you really want to get the actual books of it, um, you can see it all up front, what fables you're gonna need. Um, but you can source them all like under archive and uh, you know, just paraphrase them if you like. You can substitute a story if it doesn't fit your needs. Really substitute it for something else that resonates better for you if you prefer. I don't think it's gonna mess anything up for you to do something different. And actually, I believe she also says that you can sub, yeah, you can substitute a story. You're gonna do some review questions and there is going to be some um, suggestions or picture nonfiction books that teach the topic. And again, titles that you can gather before you start this and then pull it on when it um, is pertains to so it. All your required materials are gonna be the video, um, the fables um, or whatever you choose to swap with, picture books, color pencils and such. All right, so again, you can use this for your students living in your household or in one classroom. So, you know, don't just go passing around to every single um, one that you have. Now you're gonna receive an additional um, email or I, I'm not sure if it's gonna change the format um, by the time this is out, but you, I received an additional email that gave me access to the video elements, right? So um, that should, probably about the same thing, but just know that if you don't see it in your initial receipt, there's an additional email that comes out that gives you access to the, um, to the videos. Um, here you have this that you can print from your um, free PDF that included you PDF that you get of this. And this is great for, you know, using it again in the future or like you're using it with mul uh, multiple kiddos. And here you can post this if you have a school room, however you like to do or just keep it here, color them in once you do things. So friendship communication. So once you patch each uh, mission, you can have the kiddos like color it in, whatever it may be, self-care and emotional management. So here you can get a nice little um, snapshot of what we're gonna be doing meeting new people listening nonverbal communication personal space managing boredom managing frustration managing disappointment managing complaints joining a group sharing sportsmanship teamwork accepting differences sibling uh, rivalry apologies and asking for help so those are the main concepts that are going to be delved into in level one um, so here is the mission letter so you come in here you read the mission letter so attention campers as you know um, as you may know by now, our alien um, guests are unwilling to meet you. We need your help to make them feel comfortable. We have asked Dr. Wilson, a psychologist with experience in training aliens, to now advise meet. us with other campers and group leader for instructions. Thank you in advance for your help in completing this important mission, the Space All Camp. Right. So now this format may seem familiar to you, right? Because now we're going into what looks like in your grammar galaxy if you um, have used it before or seen it before. Step one, you write your materials, copies of of alien picture page, crayons, or marker of desire. So then you can print this, the PDF, by many you need, um, right from that PDF file. Let me just show you something while we're talking about this. So you see there in the back, if you need to, um, you know, not have it hit you right when you're at that mission, you can see exactly materialism, which is just household things. Like, I, I don't think there's hardly anything well, there's just like, yeah, there's like a couple of things that you may not have, but you can see everything from the get go by mission. So here's mission one. Step one, you need the alien page copies, crayons and marker. Step two, you need tape measure, masking tape, puppet, um, stuff animal or whatever. So it can be stuff you can swap, show and tell or whatever. And then um, step three, this is what you would need. So this tells you for every single mission ahead of time, what kind of uh, materials you will need. So you can prep that ahead of time. Um, and again, this is a very interactive curricula. So it's not gonna be like, you know, this is a workbook and you're gonna fill things in. So there is obviously gonna be some hands-on elements to it, um, which are important. Um, so here you're gonna have the first um, part, which is, and it's gonna tell you like right here, highlight it, discuss, listen, draw, mission. So ask the question, giving multiple campers a chance to respond. So you want to get the input from every child on there if you can. So why did an alien want to meet the campers? And then here is gonna give you an answer. So this is not a book that you're gonna hand to over to your child, like I said, because here is the answers that you're kind of looking for. Um, so if like, you know, they just kind of go me 
commute on you and you're trying to help them get there, um, then you know where you're trying to get, right? Uh, why didn't it work to wait for the aliens to um, feel ready? Um, why didn't it work to drag the aliens on stage? So again, these are just like discussion questions that kind of just break the ice. And then here, listen, teach the following truths about shyness or play the video lesson from the website. So here, um, so here is where you play the video. So first you're going to do the discussion of what they just learned, um, what they just listened to and this, um, the scenarios that happened once they chose option A or B. And then here is, okay, these are what you're going to be teaching. So now you can play Dr. Wilson's um, video um, or you can leave this yourself. Maybe you're running short on time, but again, like I, this, it was just like two minutes or three minutes. Here, draw, have campers draw what they think these three aliens look like on the page that follows. First, ask campers to make a shy or scared face and draw the aliens with similar expressions. Work together to bring copies of the page. Then here, mission, tell campers that their mission for the week is based on the truth, that people like it when we say hello. Get you know, you may not receive this in the same um, vein that I do. Like I said, I, I look at things with a, a, a different lens. Um, with starting this small, like starting with such a small step, which may seem small to you, um, but it may be a huge step for a lot of kiddos. Um, I think off the back that tells me like, yes, like, yes, yes, yes. You like, you get it, you get it. So the fact that the first mission is about saying hello to like random people and them, let me show you. Okay, I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> All right, so here. Put each camper's name on the left of the row or use the whole chart for one student. Color in the hand for each new person met. Extra credit for writing the new person's name in the square. So the mission, you can listen to a song if they like. Um, encourage them to say hello to at least five people during this mission with adult supervision, of course. They can complete the chart on, the, on page 10 to track it. Giving them like something like, you know, it's just like positive reinforcement, you know, not a negative reinforcement, like you a chart type of chart, but a positive reinforcement of, okay, I said hi to this one additional person. Like my oldest had, um, you know, at the peak of things, um, she was selective music, mutism. So the fact of saying hi, even to people she knew was extremely hard. Um, so I love, absolutely love that it started with a small step. Of just saying hi like it wasn't just like you know let's you know pick this scenario pick that scenario no we're gonna build up that confidence from the ground up all right so step two have campers choose to bring a beloved item to talk about for show and tell now why is this important again i'm looking at this from a psych nurse perspective um why is this important we're i'm we're, um, working on mediating or comfort level we're working on um building up that confidence to be able um to speak um in front of others um and to choose something that they are um you know is something beloved that is something that is near and dear to them there's something that they can speak on very easily versus like you know tell me a book report or something like that starting again with a small step of talking about something they truly know helps you know like alleviate some of that anxiety um just from those steps and then they grow from there all right um then step two here review study practice and share if step one was completed during a prior meeting have campers indicate true or false for the statements um below so again you're going to be building onto this it's not oh, okay this is telling me to say hello and we're done no we're going to go beyond that right so shyness is a form of fear true or false you know and then that this gives you another um token of being able to discuss it now i feel like this part this type of like more critical thinking part is um something that you can really dig in with the older kiddos the best way right? to overcome fear is to wait um false it's practice again so we are reinforcing the um those concepts but going on beyond that so mission review check how many people they said hello to since step one and it was completed during a prior meeting and then go on from there so you can do like all the mission steps if you want how quickly as you want or you can go ahead and um spread it out okay whatever is appropriate for you okay. in um folktale about fear from the website and have students dramatize the fable as you read and then ask the questions so again we're role playing we are uh, we are engaging kiddos in multi-sensory type of way right we are not keeping it just like fill in the blanks and do this we are engaging them with all their senses right so 
Um, and then you have some discussion questions here. You're, um, you're going to do role playing. You're going to dramatize. You're going to see all this throughout. All right, practice. Teach the 10-5 rule. Smile at 10 feet away and say hello at 5 feet away. Very specific instructions, very specific guidance. Love that. I love that it's that specific. I think that um, a lot of times we we think that this is just like simple little steps that you just throw in there, but there's a lot of meaning to every single step that is indicated here. Um, and I know that. Like, I don't need to ask her about this. Like, I know that that what the meanings behind this is, or at least how I perceive it. So using a tape measure and make um, masking tape, mark off 10 feet away and five feet away. Let's give them a visual, right? Have one camper um, be the greeter and the rest of the group line up more than 10 feet away. Campers will take turns being the greeter and who will smile and then say hello to the other campers as they come within 10 and five feet. So share. Have a show and tell with your group on video with uh, one or two campers. Explain that talking about an object can make the aliens feel more comfortable meeting new people. All right. So, and then it's going to go into the specific the aliens that. do astronaut breathing, say their name, and then talk about their object. All right. So giving them some, um, some starting off points to kicking off. Like I said, when my little would go mute, <laughs> um, and there's several layers to that, um, giving them actional, um, processes that they can practice and build from that it you know it's just not just okay just start talking like you're giving them the tools you're giving them the tools to pull from to bring them that to that stage all right and then here's step three review read and practice use these questions if step two was completed on previous day and then you have some more discussion so again there's a lot here right so this can span over uh, a week this can span over two weeks However you um, feel that, it, you know, you can work for it for a um, longer period of time. If this is something that is easy for your child, then you can move along a little bit quicker. Um, but you can spend a lot of time here, okay? Um, here, add up the numbers. Uh, read um, the picture book. So here's where you're going to see those other elements I'm throwing in. So read the picture book after reading um, campers. And then practice. Tell campers. Um, Saturn on five um, rocket that has that took astronauts to the moon in 1967 required 4.5 million pounds of fuel to overcome the pull of gravity. Pushing ourselves to overcome shyness requires a lot of effort too. We're going to create rockets to practice. So here you're gonna have like this um, template um, and then an activity to go along with that. So you, um, you're gonna do, when everyone has a rocket, line them up um, one side of the room Say, before a rocket launches, there's a countdown. After countdown to one, the team is committed to launching, no matter how nervous the astronauts are. I, I love the scenario. Like, I, you know, I wish she was um, near us uh, when we needed this type of, um, you know, uh, of resources. Down with right? me uh, from five. Take a deep breath on the count of one and blow on your straw to launch your rocket. When I say blast off, let's see whose rocket goes to the furthest. We will launch a couple more times to practice. So it takes practice, it takes commitment, it takes like just go, right? So um, it's giving them actionable steps that they can adapt and pull from time and time again. So color in the mission badge. Once they're done with that, you go back and color in the mission badge, they've um, achieved the meeting new people. Now, I've given you an example of three of the different steps. Yeah. See how it builds a little bit further that if you have a tween, um, you know, or, or uh, early teen that still struggles with a lot of this, um, they can take a leadership role, um, but also, also being the one that demonstrates these steps can help them the one that demonstrates um, the steps or being the one that is like in the quote unquote leadership position helps them um, by doing the return demonstrations and stuff um, to adapt them to practice it and feel empowered because they're, they're the leader um, and such and brings down a little bit of that anxiety. Um, but maybe they're just, they're not ready to be the leader, but you know, they're an older child. A lot of these discussion questions and stuff really can be taken um, deeper um, and to many different avenues. So um, I do definitely see, I was like wondering like, how is this going to work with such a big age gap? And then when I saw the individual practices and stuff, I was like, okay, 
I see it, I see it, I see it. Because um, it really can work with that big span of ages. It really can. Um, that's my personal opinion on it. Again, you're going into the next mission, you see the next steps and things go from there. Um, here, uh, mission six, I really love the video component element because it's just coming from someone else. It kind of takes me back to like those 90s style, like, um, I don't know, PBS or something like that. I just love it. It was like a little bit of nostalgia for me. I, I loved it. Uh, and my kiddos like were like in the background looking um, of what I was like reviewing. They're like, this is fun. <laughs> what are we doing? And oh, she sent me, okay, this is not part of it, but this was in, this was in my box. And <laughs> We have been nonstop playing with these. Um, like Melanie, you know as well. <laughs> Anyways, we've been playing with those. Um, you see this throughout. Like it's, again, we have these different things. So gratitude scavenger hunt. It's just various different activities, implementations, and practice. those bite-sized steps to eventually climb that hill, right? And getting to that comfort level. Now, again, this is something that can be redone when like maybe your kiddos are really young. Um, you can um, do them when they're young, like, you know, that kinder first grade, and then revisit the same resource again when they're a little older, even if they remember some parts of the story or maybe choose a different fable or a different whatever not, and then have them revisit when they really need it most. Maybe those transitional times, maybe transitioning from um, with, to a sixth grader maybe like you know those things that are super Once hard um, finish the 16 um, missions like i said you have the mission material list you have an activity planning page um so maybe you want to edit things out add things in you have this page here um available for you and it has i like how it says celebration and awards and things like that on there you have some quotes and sayings that are um shared throughout and if you want to reference that or maybe you want to like put it on your board or whatever it has it on um, here. and then here you will see for each mission which fable is being used and um, you can decide if you want to swap those out or not for something in a similar vein all right so we have here this is level one um, again that discount code for um, the, uh, for this week it's gonna be Arlene 20 will give you 20% off your bundle um, and you can um, decide if you want the secular version which I showed here or the faith-based one um, and vice versa however you like to do it um, and again thank you so much for hanging out with me if you have any questions drop them down below um, thank you so much for your presence I'll see you guys next time bye, -bye. I think somewhere in a different